listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, with your host, Vivian Bell. Well, it's declaration time, and our declaration here at She Who Believes the Podcast comes from Luke 1 and verse 45. I will be declaring this word from the English Standard Version. Remember, you can choose any version that you choose. We only ask that when you speak this and declare this word over your life, that you replace the word she, or in some versions, woman, with your very own name. Because we believe that the word of God is for us, that it is just as alive and active as it was when it was written, when it was spoken, when it transpired over 2000 years ago. So here we are again, Luke verse, Luke 1 verse 45, and it reads as follows. And blessed is Vivian who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. Uh, Isn't that a great feeling to be able to personalize the word of God, to be able to know that his word is for you and to grab hold to it and claim it and make it yours because it is as children of God, his word is true for each and every one of us. great day welcome back to the podcast you're listening to she who believes and i am your host vivian bell and i am indeed she who believes well today's topic is boundaries and strategies so some of you may have just cringed because boundaries is something you struggle with and strategies is something you struggle with um when i I felt led to talk about these two things i thought i am not the master of either right um but they are things that um god has grown me areas that god has grown me in and i and this morning when he spoke those words i felt led that he when i heard those words um i heard made in my image and i thought hmm okay so then i started searching about god and boundaries right so i came up with of course the maybe typical ones of how god set boundaries for the sea like you this is how far the water comes and that's it the rest is land um he set boundaries in the garden of eden and said you can eat of everything except for this one tree and um Boundaries, we often look at boundaries as being a selfish thing or something that might harm someone. But really, boundaries is, first of us, first of all, us having self worth or self esteem or enough care for ourselves to say, Hey, this is, this is my line. This is where my, where my gate is. This is where you can't cross over into my personal space. This is where you cannot come in and control what I do, my thoughts, my actions. So, Boundaries are really, really a great thing. Are they always an easy thing to have? They aren't because sometimes we do things out of obligation, out of care or concern for a person. We don't want to hurt someone's feelings, but in the end, we hurt ourselves because we don't create boundaries. We also have to have boundaries in the spirit. You have to say to the enemy at times, thus far you have come and no further shall you go. You've done enough with my child and I'm sick of you. You can no longer bother my son or my daughter. You can no longer have their minds. I'm going to stand in the gap for them and I'm going to speak the word of God over their lives, whether they're in my home or they're not. You have to take your hands off my children. Enough is enough. Boundaries are necessary. Boundaries are something that God gave us. He showed us how to do and how to be like him, right? Um, another uh, place that there can we can look at boundaries, It's um, we can look at boundaries spiritually. We can look at boundaries in the workplace. We can look at boundaries in relationships. The best of relationships are relationships where the boundaries are clear, and understood and the consequences to crossing the boundaries are understood now consequences doesn't mean like okay you cross this boundary i'm gonna go burn your house down (laughs) a boundary can be as simple as if this particular thing happens this is how i feel and this is how i'm going to respond for god he says if you eat of this tree you shall surely die boundary consequence um 
I know it seems I'm saying it as if it's simple. It kind of is when we look at the reason and purpose for it and when we make sure we don't use boundaries to manipulate others or to get our way. And then also don't allow boundaries to become walls where you keep everyone and everything out. And then we move on to strategies. Our God is strategic. He is so strategic. Um, God is so strategic that he made plans for your life before you were ever born, right? He says, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11 says, um, for I know the plans I have for you, says the Lord. It's plans to prosper us and give us a future and a hope. So he, he made plans for us. He has a strategy. He tells us not to lean to our own understanding. Um, in all our ways, acknowledge him and he will direct our path because he has a strategy. He has a plan. He has boundaries. And that's why there's seasons and times because in this season, this, this is where I'm, I'm, I'm letting you, you can go no, no further in this season, not because he's punishing you, but because he knows what's ahead of you. And if he doesn't stop you in this season, you may not be ready for what's in the next season. You may ruin it. You may miss the greatest part of your life because God didn't set a boundary for your particular season. And yes, I am receiving this as I am speaking it. Now, before I go today, I do owe a, an apology to a particular person. Her name is Queen Vashti. So I know you're like, what is she talking about Queen Vashti in the Bible? I am because when I spoke about um, Esther in the past, I spoke about it on the podcast a year ago. I remember in that study thinking, literally thinking, man, I wonder what made her not come out. Like, what was it? Like, what's her attitude? Like, really that bad? Because that's how it's, it's been painted. That's how the story was told. She refused and because she messed up, then uh, Esther got her spot and it was okay because Esther needed to save the people and, and, and all of those things are true. Like God used every single situation. I've seen different things in this story. I've seen things such as like um, how afterwards the king was sorrowful, um, even though he couldn't go back on his word for what he did to Queen Vashti. And I believe that benefited Esther in the end because he realized that, you know what? I need to honor my wife. I need to... Um, not let my anger and my drunkenness get the best of me. So I've even spoken about that. But what I did, what I literally failed to do when I thought to myself, when it came to me numerous times, why did Vashti refuse the king? I never looked it up. I like, I literally never researched it with all my commentary books and access to things online. I never looked up why Vashti refused the king. Well, the reality is, is that I was listening to this pastor recently and she preached about why Vashti refused the king. So then your girl had to go look it up, right? So according to tradition, the king was not just asking Vashti, oh girl, put on your robe and your crown and come walk around. No, he was saying when he said, come and put on your crown and display your beauty, he was actually asking her to appear before the people naked. This man was so drunk and so um, arrogant and so belligerent, like he literally asked his wife to come and show herself, all of herself to the people. And my girl Vashti, had some boundaries and she sent back the message to the king enough is enough it's funny because even in this moment while I'm sharing this I'm being reminded of moments in my life so God's been calling me to walk away from some things and he has a strategy and I'm following his strategy right but what what things are we willing to hold on to in order what and what will what things are we willing to sacrifice in order to have a particular thing a particular title a particular status are you willing to give up your self-esteem and your self-worth and your self-value i recently had an opportunity over this last year to um be front and center in a situation <laughs> But in the midst of that situation, there were some things that was happening that nobody else knew about. Um, of course, God knew about them. The person who was doing it and speaking the 
uh, sideways comments, um, knew what was, was going on and knew their purpose in their heart. And I could have wrote it out, right? I'm, I got thick skin. I'm, I'm, a, um, I've been through some things, but the Lord said to me, step away. He said, step away. And at first I struggled, not because he told me to step away, but I, w- I shouldn't say I struggled. I put it before God to verify, okay, Lord, it's this you, because I know you opened this door and you showed me to walk through this door. And now you're, now I've heard you say, step away. I'm going to step away. I don't quite understand it, but I'm going to be obedient. And literally after I stepped away from this situation, God showed me how, yes, I opened this particular door, but that door was not for you to stay in that room. You were to walk through that door and then to move on to other rooms. Sometimes all we can see is a particular door, right? So God opens that door and we think, yes, this is my room. And then things don't seem to go the way we think that they should. And then we start to question, okay, did I hear God right? Did I do the right thing? Did I do the wrong thing? But because God has a strategy, sometimes there's boundaries, right? So he puts a boundary to it. Okay, yes, I I walked you in this room, Vivian. Now stop. He bounds, he put a boundary. Go thus far and no further in this particular room. So when I obey God, I trusted his timing. I trusted, I just trusted him, period. I, I trusted him past my understanding of you open this door. Why am I stopping? When I did what he said, I was able to look around and see how God opened a much, much broader door. So then I walked through that particular door. And on the other side of that door was everything I expected that expected to be in the previous room, but it wasn't. It was what was only to get me to the place I needed to go. So we may have never heard from Queen Vashti again, but that doesn't mean that God didn't bless her. Doesn't mean that God didn't do good things for her. She was an example to all women to have boundaries and standards, really to all people of God, to have boundaries and standards. Do not allow yourself to be lost all for the sake of gain, of worldly gain. Her name is in the Bible. Very few women's names are in the Bible, but this Queen Vashti, she is in the Bible. The God could have literally had it say, oh, the queen refused her king and Esther took her place. No, he put her name in there for a reason. God put your name in a room, in the ear gates of someone, in an email of someone. He put you on an email chain or in a, in a, to be invited to a Zoom session. And you're like, how in the world did I get invited into this? Like literally when I listened to God and said, no, I have had opportunities open up to me on a state level in a government level that has been so crazy and that has been blowing my mind I don't know how far God's taking me in that place if I'm just to go into that room to learn how to do things more excellently um, how to um, stand in those rooms what to learn from that room or to bring what he's given me to that room I don't know what his full plan is, but I know his heart towards me. I know that when he gives me a boundary, I can trust it. And I know he has a strategy for my life. I want to encourage you today to get yourself some boundaries. God directed boundaries. Go to God and say, Lord, show me where I need to, where my, I need boundaries or where I need to strengthen my boundaries because I'm in that place too, needing to strengthen boundaries in certain areas. Um, And honestly, as I'm thinking about it, um, this message was perfect because over the last week, my boundaries were tested, like literally tested. And they were tested by people who have consistently crossed the boundaries in my life for my entire life. And I was at a place and am at a place where I've had to stick strong to these boundaries. And that has meant being alienated, not spoken to. And so when those individuals showed up again, tempting to press those boundaries, I had to stand up and say, you know what, thus far have you come and no further. And trusting the strategy of God for my life, 
I pray for them, but I'm keeping the boundaries that God has given to me. So encouraging you this week to have boundaries and strategies and you can do it. Even if you feel you struggled in it, I pray that these words made in the image of God brings you the exact same freedom that it brought me today. Because if I am made in the image of God, the spirit of God rests on the inside of me. The word of God tells us that Jesus says greater things than these that I have done that you shall do. Oh, that's power. That is power. And I pray you find that power, that you tap into that power, and that you live out that power today. Well, that's all I got for you today. I'll see you back here next week at the podcast, She Who Believes. Again, I am your host, Vivian Bell, and I am indeed She Who Believes. You've been listening to the podcast, She Who Believes, where we encourage you to stretch your faith and to believe God for the impossible.